Okay, so here we are for part two. And you can see that I've got my triangle here. But if I go into my direct select tool, I can double click on these anchor points and start to move them individually. And you only need to really double click on the first one. From there, you can just click and it'll let you move those anchor points. So I'm really able to create my own thing at this point. And so what I can do also is add anchor points or delete anchor points. And I've got this already in my toolbar because I customized it. But if you're just opening Illustrator 2020, then in order to really customize your toolbar, you have to go down here to this edit toolbar, this little dot, dot, dot. And under draw, you're going to see all of these other options. They're grayed out for me because they're actually in my toolbar. But for you, they'll probably um, be available for you to drag and drop them into your toolbar. Right, so I went to add anchor point and delete anchor point, and I just dragged and dropped them onto my, my pen tools where I picked to put those. So I'm going to get out of this. And with my shape selected, I'm going to go to add anchor point, which is right there. And I'm just going to click on my path. And from there, I can go to my direct select tool and move that around as well. So that's also an option. Um, the converse of that being that I can delete an anchor point just by clicking on top of it. So that's a way to customize your own abstract shape. Something else I can do, I'm going to make that invisible and add a new layer, is that I can also use the pen tool. Where are you at, pen tool? There you are. And pen tool works by making a series of clicks. So I'm just going to click. And it'll start to fill in. And you want to make sure always that you're closing the shape by going back to the original click. And you'll know that you're there because you can see as I'm hovering over it, it's got the little circle that comes out next to the pinhead. So I'm going to click there. So it's closing the shape. And just like any other shape, I can rotate it, do whatever I want with it. Um, but I just really want to make the point of telling y'all that your shape should really make sense, right? So even though this abstract shape is kind of interesting looking, it really doesn't make sense for the shapes inherent in here, right? So in here, you've got a lot of lines coming out this way and this way. There's a lot of triangle shapes happening that actually looked really nice contrasting with that circle. Um, but with this shape, it doesn't, it doesn't really make sense, right? Um, another thing, so I'm gonna drag in another option. This was also for project five. And I'm going to go ahead and hide the visibility of this bottom guy. And I also want to make the point of not settling on your first solution. Or if you have an idea, definitely visualize it. But maybe it's, it's still not right. So for example, with this one, this was going to be the original example that I used for y'all. And because there are so many circles in it, I thought it would look really good to have one big circle background. So I'm gonna show y'all kind of what I was thinking with that. So I'm gonna create a new layer. It's not letting me do anything right now because I'm on this layer and this layer is locked. 
So I'm going to create a new layer. And draw my circle. If I hold down shift, it'll be a perfect, perfect math, perfect geometry. And I'm going to drag it below. And so, yeah, once I did that, once it was out of my head and visualized, I could see that that's, it's not really right. It's not really what I wanted to go for. And so I was playing around with it for a while and just trying to get get that circle to work. But in the end, I decided to go with something else, an entirely like different project. So do feel empowered to do that, to try a lot of different angles and then completely scrap it and go with something else. Okay, so final thing, so I'm gonna bring back sort of my favorites out of all of these, which is that one, and I really liked that. So I'm gonna make sure it's all composed within the frame of the document. And right now you can see he's up kind of high and to the left. So I'm going to unlock his layer because I have to unlock it to do anything to it, like scale it, move it, rotate it. And I'm going to shift click because now they're both selected. And I'm just going to drag him to a space that feels good. It doesn't have to be smack dab center but you want it to feel balanced. So that's something you have to take into account of all the elements and just where they are and how they're pushing and pulling your eye. He's up a little high still. Or is she? Or are they? Okay. So once you're happy with everything, you're happy with the placement, the color, the fill, the stroke, um, all of that stuff, you're gonna go up to File, Export, Export As. You're gonna change your format to JPEG. You're gonna export it. Make sure you know where it's going. Mine's going to the desktop. And you're gonna change it to RGB, which is for screens. Maximize your quality. So for me, 10 is the absolute maximum that I'm allowed. And change your resolution to 150. So once I click OK, I can see it popped up on the desktop here. And that's what I'm gonna put on the discussion board. As for Canvas, I'm going to file, save as, and I should have already done this by this point, just in case Illustrator crashes, um, I wouldn't lose everything. So you want to save periodically and save right away, ideally. But I did not do that. Okay, so that's on the desktop too, and that's what you would submit to Canvas, okay?